Well. What happened to you? Suicide. Attempt. Not successful. What happened to you? Heart attack. Number five. Dagger, let's start with the story of how this film came to be. Now, you're the writer and the director, so let's talk about how you got the idea to write this screenplay. Very quickly, I came with these, like, totally opposite characters, like a very unsympathetic uh, character and a very sympathetic character, and, and I wanted them to make, like, a cross journey so that the, the, the person that you hate in the beginning, you're going to love at the end. Uh, so, th so that was the kind of uh, challenge as I, I said for myself. But also the person that you loved in the beginning of the movie, you still loved in the end. Yeah, but he, he does uh, he does go through a lot of changes and, and, he, and actually he, 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 he changes character along the way so he, he technically he goes from being sympathetic to being unsympathetic but I guess by the, by the point that he becomes unsympathetic, you have invested so much in him, so, so you still like him. We have Brian Cox playing Jacques, who's brilliant, he's perfect for the role. He must have been your first choice. Whenever you see him, you just want to see more of him. So, so I was kind of following that instinct that I, that I really wanted to see him, like, carrying a movie. I don't have a family, no friends. What I am interested in is that this bar goes on after I'm gone. And that's where you come into the picture, Lucas. From now on, you're my student. I, I thought the film was very funny. I mean, I, I found it very hugely entertaining. Though it works on many different levels. And Jacques was so unremitting as a character. I mean, there's not very many times you get the, the opportunity to play somebody who is completely takes no prisoners. And that's a fantastic thing to be able to play because it's just the man is such a curmudgeon and he's so kind of boiled in his own bile, you know. <laughs> I love the way that he spoke to his customers, he spoke to the tailor, the way that he drove the car. Like, yeah, he's right. such a crusty old guy. He's, he's, it's some very funny moments and the fact that he's, he's, he's his kind of raison d'etre, he runs a bar, you know, when he's, when uh, Paul's character brings all the kind of homeless people in. And, tries to help everybody and he says, no, no, we're not here to help, we're here to destroy people. So there's this sort of, there's this sort of nihilistic streak throughout the whole movie, which is of course the, very much the Scandinavian influence and very much that whole kind of Icelandic thing, which is, um, you know, it's, it's that bleak gallows humor. This one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. You're making one very serious mistake. What? You're being friendly. Overview, overview, overview. You have to know what's going on with every single customer. Who's drinking what? Who needs a refill? Who wants to be left alone? A decent bartender knows what the customer wants before he knows it himself. I'll have a Bloody Mary, please. And do you have organic tomato juice? We don't do walk-ins. My, my, my starting po point is always humor. Like, in principle, I don't like movies. It's like, I go to movies, uh, and consequently, I am disappointed. So. So, so when I watch a movie, I either watch something like really comic, like Jim Carrey, you know, like a stupid humor kind of thing, or I watch something really artistic. And for me, everything in between is kind of uninteresting. So what I am fascinated, fascinated by is to combine these two elements, two like really different elements, like the, the humor and the artistic. I don't go out uh, with uh, any kind of attention when I make a movie except just to make the movie work. I, I just want to give people a good experience and, and to move people. That's, that's like the, my, my biggest goal. And what would you say motivates the change in the character Jacques? He has this serious heart condition and, and when he is like facing the, the possibility of, of, of having a heart transplant, uh, which then fails, then then that triggers something more humane in him and more sentimental. You know, it's about getting a second chance. I mean, the whole metaphor of the heart, and you know, apart from the sheer physical thing, it's about giving you a heart that's good and a heart that's good that, that you deserve to get. Now, let's talk about the Toronto International Film Festival. What does it mean to you as an actor? I've been at, I think this is my third or maybe fourth festival I've, I've been here. And I, I, I think it's, I, I, I think from our 
from these kind of films, it's a pretty major festival to get into. I think it's probably the most important festival to get into. I've been here once before with my first film, uh, Noe Alpinoe, and at that point I, I had been traveling the whole world, uh, like on the festival circuit, and it really struck me here that the audience was really good. I mean, it's people from the street, but they really are cinematically trained, and, and you can sense that while you're watching the movie. So for me to, to watch the first, what's my movie the first time with the Toronto audience was uh, a big thing and, and a privilege. Thank you.